So given the enormity of the challenge we've got to solve and the fact that we have to solve multiple problems at once, we've got to do energy independence and this, this one called climate change. And if you remember, if you don't solve the climate change for the whole planet, and that means everyone working together, there's not much point doing the other things. So we, we've got to do all of them together. So you, you really want to know what the choices are. So let's have a quick look. What are all of the choices that we have? So we've got nuclear. And what I'm going to do here is try and make us understand wind. I'm going I'm to try and make us understand that for every single one of these, there are consequences, and there are pluses, and there are minuses. And I think the real thing that humanity has to deal with, and, and policy people, and engineers, and society, is that we have to find the right compromise. We know how we can do that. It is possible to solve the problem, but there's going to be a lot of compromises. So let's put all of them here. Nuclear, wind, solar, geothermal, biofuels. After biofuels, we're going to have, uh, what am I missing here? Fusion. This is another type of nuclear. We're going to have uh, carbon capture and sequestration. This is sometimes what people call clean coal. This is where you take the CO2 from the out output of a fossil fuel and you compress it and you bury it. And OK, so let's start there. Nuclear. Pluses, doesn't take a lot of space. It's base load power. It's very reliable. It's a proven technology, meaning we know how to do it today. We can start installing it tomorrow. On the minus side, you know, there's radioactive waste, and that's still a, a, a problem that we have to learn to deal with. Today, we use uh, a, t a, a reaction cascade that leaves not a lot of um, material for sort of nuclear armaments, but if we went to breeder reactors, that's recycling the, the nuclear fuels, we'd create a lot more sort of, I think people would call it terrorist options, so that's not a good thing. One of the unseen problems with nuclear is to make a nuclear steam turbine work, you need cold water in from a river and you dump hot water back out once you've done your heat engine. So this is also, do we have enough water? There's going to be large constraints on the amount of water in rivers. Wind. Wind's a great technology, not always available. That's a minus. Another minus is requires a lot of land. The nice thing about wind is you can put, um, you can farm on the land where you have wind turbines, so that's in its favor. Solar, well, it uses a lot of, it, it takes a lot of energy to make a solar cell. It uses a lot of rare earth elements that are mined in places like the Congo, and perhaps not in the best ways. So, you know, there's the, there's a certain amount of toxicity in the production of silicon. Um, there's a land area problem. Um, even though it is probably the highest power density per square meter of land. Geothermal is going to run into water problems. Once you've, and then another problem with geothermal, you're going to dig the holes, you're going to be pumping that water around, making energy. Eventually you're going to cool down the rock locally. Then you're going to have to move over you know, a few hundred miles, dig new holes, and you're going to be constantly digging new holes to do geothermal, um, except in some places which are particularly blessed. But, you know, so there's problems with geothermal. Biofuels, low power density per square meter of land. That's a problem. There's people, we're going to be more and more familiar with the food versus fuel competition problem with biofuels. There's a problem with biofuels in that we might not have enough, we not, might not be able to nitrogenate all of the soils enough. So biofuels may be limited by how quickly we can get nitrogen back in, or you know, that will have problems. Um, and it's certainly going to have a problem in terms of water use. Fusion, we don't know how to do yet. That, <laughs> that's a big problem. Um, carbon capture and sequestration, we actually don't really know whether when, once we've captured it and stored it, whether or not that carbon dioxide is going to stay there forever in the, um, in the geological formations we put it in or whether we put it under the ocean. So all of these things can work. Nothing is sort of, uh, you know, well, fusion is the only one we're not 100% sure will work. Everything else is working today. Um, well, CCS, there's a marginal question on whether it's working today. They all have some pluses. They all have some minuses. And we're going to have to choose carefully. Far be it from me as the engineer to say it should all be wind or it should all be solar or it should all be nuclear. That's a question that we all need to ask ourselves. But what we do need to understand is we should just be doing all of them right now as fast as we can and then start those conversations and those debates immediately. <laughs>